Hey, welcome to Family Church. We are a diverse, spirit-filled, life-giving church, healing hurts, building relationships, and developing leaders. My name is Pastor John Mark. I'm so excited that you've connected to our page today. Be sure to grab a notebook, a pen, a paper, your phone, however you want to take notes and get ready for today's message. We are in a series right now called I Am Worship. We have t-shirts available for this series in the lobby. We also got a bunch of new merch. We got this new jacket in, a family jacket. Yeah. We got some new hoodies, new long sleeve tees, some t-shirts. No t-shirts. No t-shirts. Long, long sleeve tees and a hoodie. Oh, no, wait, yes. The long sleeve hoodie. It's a long sleeve t-shirt hoodie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Family Church. We're in a brand new series called. <laughs> Today we are continuing this series, I Am Worship, by an interview. We're interviewing our new worship pastors, Pastor Christopher McFadden and Kayla McFadden. Would you give a round of applause? If you'd like to follow their social media tags, they're up on the screen behind us here. Um, and of course, I'm accompanied by my beautiful wife, Cynthia McKelvey. <laughs> So yes, this is going to look a little bit different today, but I hope you guys get a lot out of this. Pastor Chris and Kayla, uh, let's start by talking about why you're wearing a beanie <laughs> on stage today to lead worship and to preach a message. So uh, yesterday, um, it was probably about 5 o'clock. What had happened was. What, what had happened, happened was, was. That's really how I should have started. What had <laughs> happened was, I realized at like 5 o'clock yesterday that I needed a haircut. And so I went to the barber and I was like, hey, I just want you to take a little bit off the top. And my man took it all off the top, so I'm bald. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I was like, I'm self-conscious, I'm wearing a beanie. <laughs> I told him to embrace the bald. That bald is beautiful. God only made a few perfect heads, the rest he covered with hair. <laughs> <laughs> but he wasn't feeling it today, so. Maybe next week. <laughs> Maybe next week, he'll, he'll show the stubble. Stubble, yeah. <laughs> all right, here's the big question. Most people, most New Yorkers, when they retire, and they want to uh, go into the next season of their life, they leave New York and go to Florida. Yeah. You decided <laughs> to take your family from Florida and move them to the iceberg of New York. Yeah. Yeah. What was the motivating factor behind coming to New York, leaving all the things that you had behind there at Florida? Yeah, so uh, the truth is that uh, my wife and I, we have been serving um, as I worship pastors at a church in Florida for five and a half years. And we felt maybe like two years ago, a year and a half ago, that um, what God had called us to in Florida was coming to an end. Um, and we didn't know that that meant to relocate. We actually thought that our position might change mm -hmm. a little or that we would start like a new ministry in some sorts of worship. We, we, didn't, we had no idea. You were thinking that you were going to get a raise. I, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That would have helped. Been, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that would have been nice. Yeah, and so, um, so, th so that didn't happen. And um, when we actually, you know, figured out that it was our time to leave and to move on, we, um, I prayed and I said, okay, God, because the prayer that I prayed um, to God when I moved to Florida, actually, I never wanted to move to Florida because Florida is um, hot, if you didn't hot. know. Very hot. In and capital and very H. Humid. Capital, capital O. Capital T. All of it is yeah. hot. Yeah. And yeah. so um, I never wanted to move to Florida because I don't like extreme weathers. I don't like it to be very hot. I don't like it to be super cold. And so I prayed and I told the Lord, you know, I'm not going to Florida. He sent me to Florida. And so when I prayed <laughs> um, about this next season of my life, I actually said, I said, okay, God, whatever um, and wherever you're calling us to, um, we will walk and we will embrace that. Mm -hmm. And um, I thought when I prayed that, that God understood that meant somewhere else warmer, right. but um, <laughs> we didn't, he didn't get that part. And so... <laughs> And so when um, <laughs> this opportunity uh, came up, we actually felt um, immediately, honestly, when we came, that this was what God was calling us mm -hmm. to. We mm -hmm. truly believe that, again, what we were called to in Florida, we believe that we completed that. Yeah. And we now feel that God is doing something in the Hudson Valley like, un unlike any other, and we just want to be a part of that. To be That's, quite good. Mm -hmm. That's good. So yesterday... Pastor Chris took me to an Army game over at West Point. Uh, Brother Tim Boyd hooked us up with some really good seats and tickets. And I didn't realize that that was actually a dream of yours to go to an Army football game. Mm -hmm. And 
it's because you're actually an Army veteran. Yes, sir. Thank yeah. you for your service. Cool. <laughs> so you served our country in a military sense, and now you're serving the kingdom of God in another kind of military sense, right? The mm -hmm. army of God marching forward in worship. Mm -hmm. But what made you want to kind of like leave that life and leave uh, the things that you were doing in college to now do worship and ministry? Yeah. So I actually didn't want to become um, a worship pastor. Oh, well, I wanted to become a worship pastor, but um, I didn't feel that I was qualified. I didn't feel like I had what it took um, to be, uh, to lead worship and to be a worship pastor. And so uh, while I was in college, I actually allowed one of my professors to talk me out of being um, a worship leader, a worship pastor. Um, and she told me that um, I was better suited as a music educator. Um, and so I did one year music education and that's all it took for me to realize that I wasn't called to that. <laughs> and so, um, so basically your advisor was an idiot. Was an idiot. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and so, but I was an idiot for listening as well. And so um, I followed for a year and then I got to a place where um, I realized, you know, God isn't calling me to this and he is calling me um, to worship. And I felt in my heart and I felt the Lord kind of telling me like, I'm, I will equip you. And so mm -hmm. um, I pursued uh, worship ministry and um, now here we are, to, are today. Um, I went to school and I finished and completed school. But um, so that's the reason why I do or, you know, how I got started. But the reason that I continue on, uh, the truth is that my wife and I, we love building teams and being a part of a team. Mm -hmm. um, and we love seeing the life change that happens within the team, but also in the lives and hearts of um, the people who come up and show up week to week. Um, it's so cool. Like today I was like looking out why. Uh, we were leading, and I, I saw, like, I'm, I'm obviously staring at y'all, but, like, I got to see a couple people who, from week to week, they haven't necessarily been as engaging in this morning. Like, they were, like, all for it, and I was like, God, like, you're doing something special. And that, yeah. for me, is why I do what I do, because I want the heart of heaven to be on your lips so that when the enemy attacks you throughout the week, you have something to fight back. That's yeah. a good word. Yeah. yeah. And I would say your team, your team's probably relationally the closest because you meet the most of any other team of the church because you guys do oh, yeah. Tuesday night practices. Right now you're doing Monday night Christmas rehearsal, Tuesday night practice, Friday night Christmas yep. rehearsal. So your team is actually very, very close relationally. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. We, um, and, and then it's Sunday morning we're here. I asked, yeah. <laughs> I asked them to come super early. So we're together all the time. So they get to see us when we're not up here and all, you know, dressed up. But we love it. I mean, it's, it's, I believe that's um, how we build family and relationally and how we it's build good. teams and life together. It's good. Good stuff. So this next question is for Kayla. We've all seen her singing on stage a few times, and even a few weeks ago, she sang in Spanish. So first, what is your background? Well, if you can tell by the accent, I am <laughs> fully born and raised in Puerto, Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico, eh? Boricua. Boricua en la casa. <laughs> I moved to Virginia in 2009, and I lived there for four and a half, five years, and then I moved to uh, Florida, and now we're here. So from hot to cold, you know, I don't know. So I'm going to throw a curveball. <laughs> we didn't practice this question. Uh-oh. <laughs> Is it going to make you nervous? No. No. So in your last environment, in the, in the area of Florida that you were in, what was it like having an interracial marriage and raising kids in that environment? So for me, um, and I actually will take it a step for, further, I'm actually from South Carolina, so mm -hmm. um, interracial marriages aren't really, they are a thing, but it's not necessarily accepted. Yeah. Um, and so in Florida, um, the population um, in the area that we were in, we we're in a retirement community, uh, the average age is about 75. Um, and the, I mean, it's the truth. It's the truth. <laughs> and the, I never and, thought I was going to get married. Yeah, and the, uh, the is um, is not very diverse. Yeah. Um, and so, um, actually, my older daughter, oldest daughter, she was in a private school, and there was just no one in the school that looked like her. No. Um, and uh, that bothered me because I love for people to embrace who they are. Mm -hmm. I don't, you know, and and if you don't actually, yeah. And so, um, if you can't see yourself, sometimes it's hard to to be your true self. And so yeah. she wasn't able to, um, to uh, she could, but she didn't really kind of lean into who she yeah. was with the curly hair and freckles. 
She's, yeah. I mean, she's beautiful. She was having a hard time adjusting to mm -hmm. being a teenager and and look the way she looked, how beautiful she is. But yeah. nobody really looked like her. Yeah. So when we came here, uh, we actually looked at each other and we saw your guys' kids and, uh, and the staff kids and just people that looked like us and looked like our kids. And we looked at each other and we were like, this is our family fits in here just perfectly. Yeah. So. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and I, I know that, that might be a weird question, yeah. but that's the reality of, yeah. of the country that we kind of live yeah. in. Like there are parts of the country that things are still kind of weird. Like I don't ever understand it. Like yeah. that was never really my reality. Mm -hmm. I thought that we were in an interracial marriage because you're Puerto Rican and I'm Heinz 57 mutt. <laughs> <laughs> but come to find out we're in an intercultural Cultural. marriage mm -hmm. yeah. because you're not dark enough. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not black enough. <laughs> if I was, then we would be interracial. <laughs> and if that's offensive to some people for us to have like such an open conversation about mm -hmm. that, like I do apologize, but then again, I don't because like yeah. we need to be able to have these things. You know, we need to be educated. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Anyway, sorry I cut you off. Okay. So to bring it back to her background, <laughs> being in Puerto Rico and then being in the South, what is your favorite food? Ooh, um, I, love, I love all food. My Latino side, though, arroz con gandule, mofongo. I know pastor doesn't like mofongo. Anybody <laughs> likes mofongo? Yeah! <laughs> we won. We won. Mofongo? Yes. We no, love mofongo. Bene, chuleta. Yeah, I like that. Arroz con pollo? Yes. All of that's great. I love Italian food too. Uh, and I love, yeah, I hear you. <laughs> but I also love Southern food, collard greens and cornbread, oh. and fried chicken. I love it. I love it. Collard greens are an anointed yes. special yes. Yes. calling yes. to collard greens. Yes. yes. I'll take the cornbread with some honey on it. Yes. Oh, yeah. Sweet. Yeah. Yes. Sweet. Yes. Sweet. Yes. Yes. Sweet. Yes. <laughs> So the second question, I know what it's like to work with my husband. Mm -hmm. So what's it like to serve under your husband? Um, I love serving with Chris and mm -hmm. serving under him. He's, he's a great leader. And I'm not just saying that because he's my husband. He really, truly is. He loves people and the team. And um, I love leading under him and under his anointing. Um, and I really feel blessed to be able to be with him and, and be part of his ministry. Uh, I also love the team. I love building team, just, just like what he said. We love being together with, um, with the team and, and just living life together. We, we just love being together. And like he said, right now we're spending a lot of time together because of Christmas. Um, so we just, we, we love it. I love especially being connected with the, with the girls. And I call them my girls, although they're, most of them are older than me. So I love them. I love everybody. And, uh, and uh, I love mentoring them and just be part of being part of their lives. So I have it written in my notes, which means you must have said it at some time. You thought you were going to be a rock singer? So, yes. <laughs> you know in kindergarten when they say what you want to do when you, when you grow up? I said I was going to be a rock singer. So then like who? I, like, like, like what? Like what I kind of know. rock singer? I, in my mind, I thought like, kind of like Amanda Miguel. Anybody knows who Amanda Miguel is? No. Yeah, no. <laughs> Sorry. I, I should have I should have told the, the team. But anyway, it's a lady with a really, really, really big hair and I have like hair like that. So I thought that we would kinda Nice. And she's it wasn't the most it wasn't super rock but the the style. All right. And I realized that wasn't my thing, so here we are. <laughs> All right, so with that, question for both of you. What is your favorite band, favorite artist, and then what's the inspiration behind your style? Okay. So just regular music, I like 90s to early 2000s R&B. <laughs> you know, a little Usher. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that's what I like when I'm just chilling or whatever. Um, as far as worship goes, um, I really love Maverick City. I love their style. Um, Tasha Cobbs, um, Israel is like my number one. Um, because uh, th the reason behind Israel is because I feel personally that he did a, a flawless job at bridging the gap. Um, culturally, whether it be generationally, musically, culturally, and uh, I just, I long to be that um, as a worship pastor. That's yeah. awesome. For me, I love Carrie Jo. I also love the 90s and 20s, but I, I listen more to Christian music, and I do love Carrie Jo and Natalie Grant and Tasha Cobbs and all of that. And I, I'll say my 
my style would probably lean more to to carry up, carry up to. But when I do cleaning, of course, I listen to my merengue, my salsa, and all of that. So bachata. <laughs> So I will say that side of the stage is probably more Christian than we are. <laughs> Cindy, I know her favorite band's Bon Jovi. <laughs> and if you ask me about my style of music, I'm more like rock, like Aerosmith. No Aerosmith, none. I'm failing here, you liars. <laughs> you know you love Aerosmith when they did the song with Run DMC. Walk well, no. this way. I'm striking out. This is all, everybody it. holy. Everybody listen to Elevation Worship in here. Yeah. <laughs> if it's not on Sound of Life, I don't know what it is. <laughs> Actually, growing up, I only thought there was two kinds of music, praise and worship. Yeah. <laughs> I wasn't allowed to listen to anything else. What's, what's like your music style? So when it comes to Christian music, I would say that I stick with like Elevation or Lauren Daigle, um, love Tasha Cobb. Uh, when it comes to secular music, I'm really eclectic, I guess would be the way that I say it. Uh, if you pick up my music on my phone, I have everything from 90s rap, rock, mariachi, <laughs> salsa, merengue. Country. Country. I do love country music. Um, <laughs> you got I have people screaming in my ears when I'm on the treadmill at the gym. Just, I listen to everything. My kids say my music's confused. <laughs> So I, let's make this an actual sermon, okay? <laughs> okay. Um, I, I was studying out the concept and ideas of worship, and I came across a passage, the story of Jesus being led into the wilderness by the Holy Spirit to be tempted by the devil. Mm -hmm. um, the, how I came about this was I did a word search on the word worship. It pulled up all the verses that say the word worship. It brought me to this passage. This passage is written in both, in all three, Matthew 4, Luke 1, and, I mean Luke 4 and Mark 1, mm -hmm. all tell the same story of Jesus being led into the wilderness. Mm -hmm. And this is what it says in Matthew 4, verse 8, it says, again, the devil took him to a high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their splendor. And, and he says this, and I will give this to you. I have to change my voice because that's what I think the devil sounds like. <laughs> I'll give this to you if you'll bow down and worship me. Mm -hmm. Jesus said to him, away from me, Satan, for it is written, worship the Lord your God and serve him only. Then the devil left him and the angels came and attended to him. So my question in studying this out, because I'm doing a word search on worship, and I think it's the confusion that we have in the church world, was Satan asking Jesus to bow down to him and sing, majesty, worship the Like, was he asking, when he says worship, is he saying to sing a song to me? Uh, well, no. So that's not what he's asking. But if we say uh, worship, what do we think? We think Elevation Hill song, yeah. any of those churches or groups. But that's not what he's saying here. Actually, the word worship in this passage is translated from the Greek as proskunio, which actually means to bow down or to kneel or to lay prostrate and to kiss the hand. And so he's not actually asking him to sing a song. He's asking him to relinquish his power and to serve him or to revere him as sovereign. Mm. And so um, that's translating it from Greek to English. That's more so what he's saying as opposed to singing a song, which we would probably think um, yeah. what he was saying. Yeah, I like, I like that word proskunio because it has the connotation to lick the hand of a master like a dog. Mm. So that's literally what Satan is asking Jesus to do. Get down on all fours and lick my hand like a dog in complete submission. I have two Frenchies, and my one Frenchie, she's wild. She's out of control. Uh, and if you try to submit her, she wants to, like, fight back all the time. Mm -hmm. But then my boy pup, Man, the moment I get down on the ground, he's laying on his back, and he's in just total submission to me. And that's kind of the proscunio yeah. that Satan is asking, is just to give up all of your authority, give up all of your dignity, revere me as your God, and lick my hand like a dog. Yeah. That's wild. Yeah, yeah. and Jesus' yeah. response to that was, worship the Lord your God and serve him only. And he was reciting uh, Deuteronomy 6.13, 
In Matthew, they used the word worship. But in Deuteronomy, they, uh, the word used was fear the Lord. And in the Greek, fear the Lord means yare, which means to revere or to reverence. So we are to revere or reverence the Lord. Yeah. Um, fear, fear and worship are interchangeable words in these two passages. And, uh, but we worship the Lord because we love him and because we want him in our lives. And because worship is a celebration of who God is. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's good. I love that. I love that he says that Jesus is reciting Deuteronomy. Yeah. And he says, fear the Lord and serve him only. But then in Matthew, in the New Testament, so we have Old Covenant, mm -hmm. Old Testament, yeah. fear. Mm -hmm. New Covenant, New Testament, worship. Yeah. So technically, when we come and we show God reference, mm -hmm. that is the word fear. Yeah. We're showing fear of reverence or respect or honor to God. I think even today, as we were in the, this worship moment, mm -hmm. there was this awe, there was this feeling of like, wow, God truly is in this room today. We truly are experiencing the presence of Lord. Mm -hmm. And that would be that side of that fear, that worship, like, wow, yeah. Yeah. this is a really great worship moment. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's not like, wow, Pastor, great did, Pastor Chris did great. Wow, Gerda did great. Wow, Jeremiah did great. No, it was God is great, yeah. and God is here today, and that's that idea of fear. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, Cynthia. Yes, Michael. <clears throat> trying to figure out how to word this. I've never asked you to lead worship. I would not. <laughs> <laughs> um... <laughs> <laughs> He's going unscripted. I have no idea what he's going to say right now. <laughs> so singing on stage in front of the congregation would not be your special talent. Nope. Right? <laughs> so for several reasons. <laughs> <laughs> I'm shutting very lightly, guys. <laughs> Trust me. This is life-giving. This is, this. tell us, inform us, show us, lead us how for other people in the room where maybe leading worship or singing mm -hmm. might not be the thing that draws inspiration in worship for them, how else can we worship God the way that the scriptures say? Well, first, worship comes out of your heart, right? So worship is as individual as all the people sitting here in this room. We're all very different. Um, like he said, I would not get up on the stage and lead worship. As a matter of fact, I tend to be more of a behind the scenes person. So when I started coming out and doing messages with him, it would like make me sick to my stomach. <laughs> it's just not who I am. Um, and that's all I meant. That's all I had. That's all I meant by what you were what I was saying. Keep going. <laughs> but there are other ways that you can worship. For some people, it'll be journaling or writing poetic, poetically. Uh, for others, it'll be going on nature walks and hikes and just seeing what's around you and acknowledging the fact that God has created something amazing. For over 12 years, we lived up on the Wurtzgore Mountain and coming down on the highway daily, I used to take pictures and post them on Instagram or I would like text them to Michael and he'd be like, why are you sending me this? <laughs> but I was always amazed at just the way the trees looked in the fall and in the spring when everything's like super green. And it would just be really amazing to me. And even for people who aren't outside or don't want to go outside, I think of like when your babies are sleeping, how often I would watch my kids sleep and just think like, you gave this to me. Yeah. Like, this is no, amazing. No, no, what you thought was like, dang, my husband makes beautiful babies. <laughs> um, they You're all like, look like Yo, me. My, my so... husband <laughs> is gorgeous. <laughs> I do think you're some hot stuff. Hey! Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but all three of those kids are Serranos. <laughs> but for other people, you know, it could be painting or building something. <laughs> Anything that makes you use your imagination to do something for God. And for others still, if you're like a super chatty person, maybe an extra, kind of extra type person, just being in a quiet meditation, like thinking of what God has done for you, it makes you change the way you normally are in your day to day, and it focuses all on him. Yeah, that's good. And for others, it's just serving the local church. There are many, many people that are not gonna get on this stage and do what we do, but maybe they want to 
you know, build the drum enclosure or help make props for Christmas or do something in the fam kids or up in Chosen. That kind of puts you in the background but still help. Mm -hmm. Those are all different ways of worshiping God. Yeah, it's good. Yeah. Jesus says in Matthew 25, 35 through 40, for I was hungry and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you invited me in. I needed clothes and you clothed me. I was sick and you looked after me. I was in prison and you came to visit me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you or thirsty and give you something to drink? When did we see you a stranger and invite you in or needing clothes and clothe you? When did we see you sick or in prison and go to visit you? The king will reply, truly I tell you, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. Yeah, it's so good. Mm. Jesus is literally saying, mm -hmm. if you've ever served another person in any sort of capacity of their need, you serve the Lord. Yeah. Mm. He's saying like, when you serve others, you are literally worshiping the Lord. Yes. Mm -hmm. I love that. It's so good. Yep. So serving others is worship. Yeah, it's good. And now this last form of worship. <laughs> this expression of worship Pastor Mike is having fun with. He likes to dance. <laughs> I love to dance. <laughs> come on, pump it up, pump it up, pump it up. Come on. All right, all right, all right, all right. Save that for after church. Let's go. He makes me sweat on a regular, I swear. <laughs> Yo, listen, we got to make church fun. <laughs> yes, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Ain't nobody else going to bust out a little merengue right there in the middle of church. <laughs> All right, so in, 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 a, in a real, real, real question here, because this has happened, I can't tell you how many times, where we've had to do counseling sessions with couples where the wife would say something like, I just wish my husband was more like Pastor Chris, I wish my husband would just, you know, be the man of the house like X, Y, Z. First of all, wives, stop nudging your husbands in church services. <laughs> yeah. And husbands, stop nudging your wives. That's not, mm -hmm. that's not really the point behind what we do here. But I want to tell you the reality of the matter. What you see us do on stage on Sundays is our job. Yes. It's what we get paid to do. I would hope that you all work very hard at your craft, at what you do at your job. Right. Yeah. And then probably at home, you might be a little different at home than the way you are at work. Yeah. Yes? Can we, can we agree? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, Kayla, being married to Pastor Chris, does he sing 24 <laughs> hours a day, seven days a week? Like, the second you wake up, he's like... Kayla, <laughs> my love. Uh, no. <laughs> no, I actually thought when we got married that that was kind of going to be my reality, that he was going <laughs> to wake me up playing the piano, and he was going to, you know, write songs for me. I'm still waiting. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, wink, wink. No, uh, it's not. We, we are normal people. Yeah. We're normal people. This is his job. This is what he, what, what he gets to do, and, and we, we, we love it. But at home, he's just Chris. He's daddy, and he's my husband, and we just do normal things like everybody else. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like when, when we have dinner together or we're outside at the fire pit, yeah. honestly, maybe one time ever it's happened that someone pulls out an acoustic guitar and we <laughs> sing a song. It's not like, yeah. that's, that's not the reality of what life is. And, and I kind of wanted to take a moment today to kind of celebrate that and, and kind of let some people off the hook yeah. who, yeah. Let, me, let me talk to the men for a moment. If you don't think 
that you're spiritual enough to be the spiritual head of your household, mm -hmm. you gotta get that out of your head. Mm -hmm. yeah. Let that shame go. Yeah. Let that guilt go. You are the spiritual head of your household if you make wise decisions for your household. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Wise decisions for your household. Yeah. If you make foolish decisions for your household, then you need to wise up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Then maybe you need to take a little bit more time and pray. Take a little bit more time and seek the Lord. Before you make a rash decision, say, Lord, do I need to be doing this? Is this something I need to be putting my money into? Is this a decision that's best for my family? But I wanted to take a moment and, and ask Cindy a real, real transparent question. Mm -hmm. Like, what does the family see as my daily routine? Because I would say that they don't get to see as much of my spiritual daily routine as people think. Correct. Um, as far as like what people would assume is his like, you know, many hours of Bible reading and oh. worshiping and all that stuff, <laughs> that doesn't happen at home. You know, we have three kids, two dogs, it's kind of loud. So he actually gets up in the morning between 6.30 and 7 and comes to the office to be able to do his devotions and his studying before all the staff comes in. Um, just because it's hard if anybody works from home and has kids, you know, doing, focusing on anything is kind of difficult. Um, but that doesn't mean that we don't see it as a family. He's still the spiritual head of our household. He's, for the most part, I would say 99% of the time has always made wise choices to the point where he can make a decision and I don't ever have to worry like, is this, is this right? Like, is this going to work out? Um, if our kids get hurt, he's the first one to pray over them. He, so on his real regular life, we see his relationship with God, it shines through, but it's not like we're watching him studying or be like, shh, daddy's praying, because that he does, he makes sure to like take that off site and do it himself. Yeah, I, I just, I really wanted to take today in this conversation mm -hmm. of, and this interview of worship to say like, um, there could possibly be like unspoken expectations that we have as Christians yeah. to how each other should act and behave in the home. And, and, and I think that there could be some undue pressures to perform spiritually. Mm -hmm. um, if, if your kids get hurt or you guys need to make a, a big decision, take that time and pray together. And you don't have to know all the theological beliefs of the Bible in order to pray like, Lord, give me wisdom. Yeah. Help us make the right choice. Mm -hmm. right. Lead us to the right salesperson to give us the right deal. Yeah. Yeah. Lord, here's what we can afford. Open a door that you can open. Yeah. Close a door that we don't need to be walking through. Absolutely. Give God that room. And, and, and that's, that's it. Like, it doesn't have to be this, you know what? It's Friday night. Yep. We're not watching TV. <laughs> we're turning on worship music. Yeah. The whole family's going to worship God. <laughs> By God, we're going to worship today. Yeah. <laughs> and I'll tell you what that's going to do is it's going to push your kids away. Yeah. yeah from wanting to serve God, because yeah. now you just got emotionally charged about making them, no, we're gonna have fun in worship. Yeah. And it kind of ruins the whole moment, right? So, honor God, worship is the celebration of who God is. Yeah. And you can do that in any form or fashion. This week, I was not in the office hardly at all this week. I was in the shop, welding up some metal and stuff for our Christmas production coming up. And I had my heavy metal music playing. And I gotta tell you, like, I was so full, like my love tank was so full, uh, being in the garage, working in the shop, knowing that I'm building sets and things for our Christmas production, yeah. and to me, that's worship. Yeah. It, it was, it's worshiping God with my hands that I could build something that was, would be used for the glory of God. Yeah. Uh, Pastor Chris was in there, he was uh, framing up some, from some studs and, and shooting some stuff, so I, I just, today was that idea of, Finding God in your own environment, in your own realm for worship. Do you guys have anything you want to add? Yeah. I think one thing to add for, for the women, if, if I could, is um, especially the ones that stay home or, or if you work outside, is remember that whatever we do can be worship. Mm -hmm. If you're doing the dishes or if you're changing a diaper or whatever it is that you do or working outside the house to help financially, whatever you do is also worship. Yeah. It doesn't have to be something so spiritual where you have to be, a, a, you know, a, alone or yeah. whatever. Just put your Bible out, yeah. listen to it, you know, or put That's some good. worship music or 
Just do life with your kids. It That's doesn't good. have to be so hard. Yeah, and, and again, worship's not about how it makes you feel. Yeah. yeah. It's the celebration of who God is. Yeah. Pastor Chris, if somebody wanted to take the next steps in worship, maybe they feel a calling to worship, what could they do here at Family Church to begin that journey to, to have a job kind of like yours? Yeah, so here at Family Church, we are actually starting or launching a school here, a school of worship to be more specific, through uh, SUM. Uh, that school will actually launch in the spring, but you can start signing up right now. Uh, you will be able to take courses on theology and you will learn the why to worship. Why do we worship and how do we worship? Um, but you'll also get practical, hands-on experience as well uh, through the school, as well as a fully accredited uh, Bible uh, degree. Well. Yeah, so there's, there's the bachelor's degree in worship. There's the bachelor's degree of theology and biblical studies. And then we also have two master's programs that we're gonna be offering in the spring. Yes. Uh, I will actually be taking the Masters of Divinity program. If anybody mm -hmm. wants to go back to school, get their master's, mm -hmm. join me, take some classes with me, it's gonna be great. But for those that don't really feel the call to go back to college, mm -hmm. what could they do on a serving level in connection to worship? So here at a Family Church, we have a lot of different places where you can serve. If you have a gift or a talent uh, as when it comes to vocally or musically, you can, this room, obviously, we use, we do worship. But also, worship is happening upstairs in Chosen right now. It's also happening down in Fam Kids. Uh, and we also have other opportunities for you to lead worship as well. So if you feel a calling to musically, uh, musically worship the Lord, then come see me in the lobby after service. But if you just want to serve the Lord, uh, we have production. We have uh, people in the tech booth. We have people all around in the worship departments and the creative departments where you could serve the Lord and it is worship. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Pastor Chris, Kayla, we are just so happy to have you on our team and, and already the changes in the life that you brought to our worship moments. Yep. We thank you guys so much. Let's go ahead and close in prayer. Father, we thank you for this interview of worship, this time that we could actually celebrate who you are through a conversation of worship. Lord, we pray today that we are blessed coming in, we'll be blessed going out. Everything we set our hands to would prosper and be successful. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 We love you guys so much. Thank you for watching today's message. My name is Ashley, and if this message has made an impact in your life in any way, I'd like to ask you to do a couple of things. First, we want you to like and subscribe to our channel and join us right here every Sunday at 9.30 a.m. or 11.30 a.m. The next thing I'm gonna ask you to do is take a next step on your journey, and we would love to help you do that. You can head on over to familychurchny.com or email us at team at to get started today.